So my intention here is to support you guys on like through this part of the journey and the things that are happening in the reality planes in the journey of ascension, okay? So this is what we're doing. We're gonna talk about all the things. <laughs> and I'm excited, so let's set some intention, take a breath. <sighs> we're gonna get grounded together too because we haven't done that here in a little bit and it just feels good. So set an intention. If there are things that you want to receive, um, answers to, if there's clarity of anything in life, anything, anything. If there are um, questions you want answers, solutions, opportunities, like things that you want to come to you, call them in, set an intention right now. Like I intend for this, like during our time together, for this to bring me clarity, for this to bring me answers on, for this to bring me this. And it doesn't mean that I will talk about those things. It just means that in the process of doing this, you will know because the energy will be carried for you. This is like the tricks of the energy and how it works. It's pretty damn awesome, okay? So set those intentions if there's things. Um, also, if you wanna change your state of being, if you want to feel like my intention is that by the end of this um, time that we have together, I feel inspired, I feel aligned, I feel better that my ascension symptoms are gone, right? Or whatever, whatever it is. Um, I happen to have a headache at the moment because I didn't sleep last night. Those of you that, <laughs> that watch my stories, you know. Oh, here, let me actually put my phone on silent really quick. So those of you that watch my stories know that I was up to like 6.30 because <laughs> I was in the Goddess on Mission Facebook group going through everyone's introduction videos like with tears. I was so excited just like feeling the energy of everyone and just the leaps that are happening. So long story short, I have a headache, but this is one of the beliefs and maybe this helps you for me to say it. This is one of the beliefs that I reprogrammed for myself is that no matter what's happening, if I have a headache, if I don't feel, you know, 100% amazing, I can still connect. I can still be inspired. I can still receive revelations. My headache is not in the way of me being worthy of receiving divine guidance and healing, right? This is a big thing because sometimes when people get sick or they don't feel good, which was me a few years ago, it's like, oh, I don't feel good. Today is not a good day for me to like get answers. That's not true. You can rewire that, okay? So I am, I am a testament of that. Okay, so let's get our grounding on. So set your intentions. Let's get our grounding on. So rub your palms together, generate some energy, activate your 72,000 nerve endings, chakras in your hands, press them together, bring the left and the right brain together, bring them to the heart, activate your heart, feel your heart. That's why we do this. Okay. And then take a deep breath in, close your eyes. If you can close your eyes, <laughs> inhale, big inhale, holding the breath and hold it connect to your heartbeat lengthen and straighten your spine turn your gaze up to your third eye point activate your intuition while you're holding the breath and then exhale powerful <sighs> again inhale holding the breath and now squeeze your energy upwards awaken the spine awaken the kundalini squeeze your energy up through every chakra every vertebra all the way bringing the oxygen to your brain and then exhale Last time, inhale, hold the breath, squeeze your energy upwards, hold it, hold it, hold it, lengthen your spine, feel everything going in alignment, feel your crown chakra going bing, and then exhale. Okay, this time we're gonna ground. Inhale into your heart, hold the breath for just a moment, and now exhale, push your energy, your awareness, your breath down to your feet. <sighs> Connect to the light grid. Woo! Feel that. Feel the light grid. It is lit up in amazing, amazing opalescent, iridescent, rainbow light colors. It's amazing. And it's alive. Do you feel that? Inhale and keep on connecting with it through your feet, through your chakras. 
under your feet, but then feel how that energy is wavy and it rides, like it actually like comes up and you ground from every chakra, everywhere, okay? So breathe into your heart. And exhale, connect, ground into the grid. There we go, multi-dimensional, 12-dimensional grounding. This is what it is, okay? So you feel it under your feet, you're connected under your feet, and then you allow everything else about you to plug in, to connect, and it's like you're in the waves, you're in the light, you're all connected, okay? So feel it, feel it, and it's like, it's amazing colors. Um, and just feel it, if you don't see it, just feel it, okay? And then we're gonna go down to the earth. So inhale into your heart, Exhale down, all the way down, going through all the layers, down, 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 down. <sighs> exhale, exhale, and go, continue going, continue going until you go, boom. I am at the core, I am at the heart. This is the essence of Mother Earth. This is Gaia, this is her light, this is Divine Feminine. And use your breath as you need to, connecting here to the Crystal Kingdom, to the fairies, to the devas, to the elves, to the elementals, to the inner earth, to everything that is magic. Um, really connecting to the power of the elements and the alchemy that is available here. And then it kind of feels like you're expanding your roots of light, okay? And so just kind of expand and connect. Connect to the magic, connect to the possibilities, connect to your crystals, to the knowledge that is stored, the library of knowledge. Okay, you do this by intention, feel it out. And then inhale, Mother Earth's love back up. Inhale, inhale, big inhales. Hmm. Feel, it's like sparkles and love and just support being held in this light, in this amazing feeling of motherly love. And Mother Earth's energy, Gaia's energy, will wrap you in a spiral. It feels wavy. It feels like a spiral. Bring it all the way up, all the way up to your heart. Feeling supported, connected to the earth. And then this time we're going to inhale into our heart and go all the way up to the heavens. Okay, so inhale into the heart. Exhale, push your energy up through your chakra pillar up. All the way up through your crown chakra. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Go all the way straight. Don't look at anywhere else. You're going straight for higher self, straight to the heavens. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Boom. 13th chakra, top elevator floor. You're all the way up at your higher self resonant energy. This is where you're sinking up right now, okay? So use your breath. Keep staying up there. <sighs> best version of you, God self, God energy, creation energy. This is 12D always, all the time. This is where you can always tap into it if you fall out of alignment here on the planet Earth realms, okay? This is where it is all the time. And so this is where we connect to the divine masculine, to the support, to the creation and manifestation energy. This is everything that rains down on us, okay? This is the things that we want to manifest. This is the support. This is the love. This is the holy shit. You're doing this journey and you're doing amazing. Like, you are so ready for this. You are so meant for this. And you are so just doing awesome. You're brilliant. You're meant for this. I'm so proud of you, okay? This is what's coming from the heavens. This is the divine masculine support. Like, you got this. You're meant for it. Breathe all of that in. <sighs> You're doing awesome. And this is just, it feels like, literally like a big giant rainbow bridge with <laughs> full of like answers, full of alignment, full of manifestation. Just boom, coming in, bringing it in, all the possibilities, all the solutions, everything. Bring it into your heart, breathe it all the way in. And then hold in your heart the alchemy of heaven and earth. Feel it, feel it, feel it, and then expand it. Blow it up, bigger, bigger, bigger. You're an alchemist, you're fully in charge. You're running your light, you're running your energy. Expand this feeling into your aura. Expand, expand, expand. All the way, yes, share it. Blast the earth with it. Tell everyone it's possible energetically, okay? This is what we wanna do. And when you're ready, here we are, open your eyes. Amazing, when I opened my eyes, 33 of you were on the live.
That's pretty awesome. The signs are real, right? 33, the number of the ascended masters. We are so supported. So if you do that, my loves, every day, and this will be available, if you ground like that every day, ding, you will feel amazing. There's no way that you won't, okay? So, so good. Welcome, my loves. Welcome to our special live. All right, here we go. So we're going to talk about ascension, and I will take questions too, okay? So if you guys have them, we can talk some questions. I just realized that I wrote some things that I wanted to talk to you about on my phone <laughs> and I'm talking to you on my phone. So we're going, we're going with what I remember. I wanted to talk to you about the stages of ascension. Okay. Because right now, uh, Joanne says it's amazing. I just got done doing that outside. Yes. That's the best. Oh my gosh. Lipstick. You guys tell me if I have lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> We have to have each other's back, okay? Magical, amazing. Gives you so much energy too. Yeah, so you guys, if you do this, I call this the alchemy of heaven and earth. When I tell you on the posts, right, and in my stories, remember to ground to heaven and earth. This is the key, this is the key. This is the key, okay? This is how you feel in the flow. This is how you feel supported. When you're cut off, it literally is like mom and dad, right? But divine mother and divine father and divine feminine and divine masculine, it's creation and manifestation. It's the forces that come together, but they can only come through you th from your heart, okay? And you have to just, this is what I call running your energy. So this is amazing. And I teach you guys how to do this, obviously, in depth in my courses, okay? Oh, uh, yay, the images, yeah. Yes, yes. Do you know what it is, you guys? I never watch videos, like music videos and whatnot. I have never watched that. I'm very picky about the movies that I watch too and the content. For some reason, it just started when I was a kid. And I, you know, I love Star Trek and I didn't love the MTV. When it came on, I was like, this is not the shit I want to like, this is not my, like music was always so much cooler to me when I could make up my own stuff in my head. And it still happens to this day. Sometimes like a song is so amazing to me and then I'll go and look at the video and I'm like, that is not the vibe. That is not the vibe. That is not the vibe. I'm so glad that the artist channeled the song, but it's better in my head. So I developed this connection and this clarity. And so, you know, being able to see and feel things and like feel that like, you know, what I, when I talk you through stuff and you feel it and you connect with it, that's magic. That's so cool. And like, I wish for all of you guys to feel it, which is why we clear out all of the other stuff out of our minds. And then you actually, you know, start getting this, these visuals for yourself and these words and these feelings for yourself. It's like, ah, it's amazing. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. So yay. Okay. So glad that you guys are loving it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, it gave me an intense headache. My head literally feels like it is about to explode. Okay, go drink water. If you get a headache after you ground, okay, you are dehydrated. Um, go and get like tons of water. Like this is probably not even enough, okay? And put Himalayan salt in it because it will help you retain the hydration. So it's a, that's a big important thing. All right. Awesome. Because you have to be able to sustain it. Okay. You have to be able to sustain all of that. So, um, feeling the waves on the grid this morning. Yay. Amazing. Okay, cool. So that's 12 D welcome to 12 D. <laughs> and when you have anything that you're also, I just kind of heard this from my guides and angels over here. Um, if you're an empath and you just did this and you actually connected to my energy and you feel a headache, you're feeling my headache. So I'm going to teach you this in real time. Okay. Visual imagine like you may have tapped into my energy field too much. And so you're actually feeling it's like a pounding headache that's happening right now like this. Okay. So if you're feeling that it's my headache, don't take it on. This is a big, huge lesson. So this is actually, thank you. This is actually like a big thing for like real life, like everyday stuff. Okay. If all of a sudden something comes on like that and you're like, wait a second. Okay. So disconnect, visualize that there's an energetic cord between us. Okay. And 
actually take it, take it for yourself, unplug, unplug it from the headache and feel the connection to your own higher self, the connection to the ground, the connection to your aura, the connection to the 12D grid, okay? Get connected to your higher self and to the earth. So unplug from me, right? You can, you can still receive energy from me, but you don't wanna feel <laughs> my headache. And that's a thing that happens when you're an empath, okay? So I hope this makes sense. Try it, let me know. Oh, I feel you guys. I feel you guys all in my energy field. It's so funny. By the way, like plugging into the 12 D grid, you do feel a lot more. So you have to actually be able to handle like energy and what's happening. Cause it kind of feels like people's auras tickle you <laughs> like even long distance. It's kind of funny. Okay. So, uh, if I have sweaty hands afterwards, is that normal? I had them over my heart. Absolutely. It's all of your senses are coming on. Okay. So when we do it like that, it's big. Like I took you through an intense thing because, well, frankly, because I needed it. <laughs> and so generally speaking, because I needed to connect on that level because it allows me to bypass my headache and show up for you guys. Like you don't feel like my headache is limiting me right now, right? Like you feel like I'm coming from a place where divine information flows and so it's heaven and earth right and and it comes through me so that's a powerful grounding that's the way that i feel that's the way that i like to do it so um if you feel it it's like your senses are like holy shit that's actually possible right so totally totally okay that helped yes removing the cord from me helped the headache see amazing 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 always remember that unplug from people plug to the heavens, plug to your higher self. Okay. That's very important. Also, if you feel like people are draining you for whatever reason, unplug them from you. Okay. Plug them to the ground, plug them to divine, you know, father in the heavens, divine mother in the earth, however you want to do it. But like unplug and re plug them over here. I do that with family all the time. <laughs> so it's just, you know, like things happen. Okay. Yes, I will share this to my story and I will, I will also put it on, um, on my YouTube. Okay. So that is so funny that you said it feels like a tickle because when you said it, you could feel all of us. I thought tickle, 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 you know, sister, it's right on. Uh, Bobby says I've been laughing for hours today. I don't know why I'm feeling so much laughing energy. That's amazing. And it's also Bobby because you've been doing the work and you're on mission and you're in the course and you're showing up and it's, that's what happens when you put in the work and you're doing it and you're getting your alignment on, even though sometimes it may not make sense, which is a thing that happens, right? For some people, this is like a trust thing. I was going through like the goddess on mission, God, goddess and gods on mission last night. And this is a huge leap of faith and you just trust, right? You trust because your soul is pulling you and then you do this jumping thing and then somehow it starts to make sense and the ground catches you and the energy catches you and you're like, holy shit, I can walk on air, right? And so that's kind of what happens and then it gets better and you feel lighter and you feel like laughing and you feel like, you know, good things. So it's amazing, it's amazing. Um, I'm really new to all of this and I have been feeling so out of whack. Okay, so let's talk about Ascension, okay? Let's like actually talk about the journey of Ascension. So. It basically goes like this, and this is the short, short version, but because there's like a lot of people like mass awakening right now, let's kind of give you some bullet points because I want to help. So, because you know, we all win when we help each other out. So like once you get it, always make sure that you share with your people. <laughs> this is why like we're in it together. Once you realize that you're like, we really have to help each other out because we're moving forward. Like this Ascension thing, we're doing it together, right? Okay. So. All of a sudden, boom, something happens and you wake up and you're like, holy shit, the world is not what I thought it was. I am a being of spirit and energy inside of a physical body. What the fuck is going on in this world? I have been lied to. Like, I don't know the truth of what's happening. And then you question everything. Okay. So that's like where it starts. And then belief systems, hurts, pains, fears, everything happens. Generally, there's a dark night of the soul. Okay. So it starts out, my eyes agree. My eyes are like, oh, we remember. <laughs> so, um, and I can laugh about it, 
but because I have gone through this so many times that you learn to become the observer of your journey, right? And so I'm like, here we go again. Like, let's feel the feelings. Man, it sucks, but I can laugh about it because it's like, I know it's a stage, right? You know it's a stage, you know you have to go through it. And like, I've been there, I've done that, but I also know the bliss on the other side of it. So I can talk about it, you know, as an observer of the experience. So you wake up, you have your dark nights of the soul, because you never know how long, right? It depends on your skills and your tools. The second that stuff hits, you wanna find support, okay? You wanna find support, and the good news is right now, there are many like available support systems. There's many people that are offering, like even on YouTube, right? Like there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of light warriors, I'm going to say, and light workers that have gone through this and that are actually like supporting others going through these phases. So you actually have support. Thing that was not happening when I started this thing, everybody was like, you're losing your shit, right? So um, that's the good news. So you're, you're definitely doing it at a good time. The other thing though, is that you have to do it really fast because the world is, so this is the downside of awakening right now, is that time has sped up because time changed. In 2012, time changed, okay? And so we're going faster. And then it changed again in uh, 2017. And then like, so there are cycles of time, okay? And so it changes and it goes faster. The Mayans used to call this like the underworld. Like one fall, which is like a grid, it falls and then we move faster. Because remember, the only thing that is allowing us to have an experience of separation here on earth is time. Time creates space. Space and time give us the opportunity to be in separation having a individual experience expression of self while we navigate on earth but without time there would be no space and without time and space we wouldn't be able to have our own individual experience because there would be no separation there would only be unity and in unity we all grow together so souls don't have an individual experience this is why we are here this is why we've fallen fucking teared remember that <laughs> This is why we said, yes, this is a good idea. I'm going to go to earth and do this thing because my soul wants to grow. Okay. So remember that you had a choice. Remember that you're here on purpose. Always remember that. And it's important because we want to clear out the victim mentality. So this is the thing that happens after your dark night of the soul. You're like, shit. People lied to me. I don't know the truth of what's going on. I feel cheated by life. I feel like my parents taught me all this bullshit or my, you know, I wasn't treated right, whatever. You start going through all of these things. That's all stuff you have to clear, okay? That's the story. That's the story that we chose to be born into in order to learn the lessons that we needed to learn in order to do the things that we came to do on planet Earth. So it's like, a little crappy <laughs> at first because you're like, did I really need to go through that stuff? Like, was that really necessary? Dear God, like, why did I have to endure that? You know, when I was a kid, that feels very unfair. That feels like not cool. But then on the other side, once you complete the cycle and you connect the dots, right? You're like, shit, now I know why I had to go through that. That's really shitty, but now I get it right? Like now I get it. Now I know. Now I do the healing. Holy shit. Here's the bliss on the other side, right? So it makes sense after. So when you're waking up, you have to do that. You have, there's a lot of forgiveness. There's a lot of that. And then all of a sudden it's like you do some work. Okay. And hopefully by this time you find meditation, you question things about God, you question things that you've learned, you question your faith. Like you have to go through all that. And then you're like, what is real? Boom. So then you have your moment where all your chakras go, your chakras go pop, 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 pop. Okay, a side note, a lot of people say chakras, not the word, chakras. Do you hear the difference in the energy when I say chakras or when I say chakras, okay? It's a Sanskrit word and words are vibrational like energy. So when you say a word and you make it sound, it has a resonance in your body. So just know that all of you Reiki people, all of you that are into it, that's why I say chakras. I was very blessed and very lucky to learn early on from a Native American shaman that's uh, who I received my Reiki from. And so it was very like, very like for real <laughs> kind of like ceremonial stuff and it's chakras. Okay, 
So now that we have that, because the sounds make, um, they make you feel a certain way. That's why mantras, we repeat them, right? You say a mantra and then you feel a certain way. Mantras are high vibrational sound currents. So you want to pronounce things. Okay. Um, your chakras go boom, 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 boom. And then you're like, what the fuck is going on? Your Kundalini rises, right? And all of a sudden some people like burn through their spine. You get shot out. You have like these crazy lucid kind of experiences. You find yourself in the astral planes. You have crazy ass dreams. You're like, what is going on? What is happening? I'm losing my shit. Nothing makes sense, but everything makes sense at the same time, right? Like that kind of thing. So you start going through it and you learn. That's the thirst for knowledge. And you're like, I gotta know, I gotta know, I gotta know. You're like researching, diving in, rabbit holes, conspiracy theories, higher knowledge, give me everything, right? We go through this phase where it's like, I need to know all the things. Then you gotta slow down and you're just, and you can't do anything else. During this phase, okay, which can go at different stages because it's kind of like there's phases and there's layers and there's density. So you shed something and then you get into it deeper. You shed something, you get into it deeper. As you're do, going through this, then you hit a stage where you're very sensitive. You actually deal with enough of your stuff that you're very sensitive, okay? You, you get to your heart. This is the part where generally it's really hard to have sex, okay? And I'm just gonna tell you how it is because Sexual energy intertwines your chakras. When you start doing the, this, this part, okay, it's, you get very sensitive and you can't mesh. Like you can't intertwine your chakras with other people's energy because it feels like you can't sustain it. And it feels like you're very sensitive. You're very sensitive to TV, to radio. You're very sensitive to the environment. Pay attention to that part, okay? If and when that hits you, there's a reason, okay? And I mean, if you're single and that's not a thing, it's not a thing, but you know, or maybe it is a thing because you're single. I don't know. But like, <laughs> if you're in a relationship, generally that's where it shows up and you're like, crap, <laughs> I can't, like not up for it, right? But it's a phase that you go through because your energy is more important. Your alignment is more important and that's just how it is. So when you go through it, just know you're not alone. Everyone goes through that phase and that's okay. And you have to recalibrate, okay? You have to recalibrate. Afterwards, then you go through a phase where you're like, da, 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 I wanna have sex with everybody because everything is great. And like, I wanna share and I wanna share, right? And so you're just like, I wanna share all this love. And so something inside of you becomes like very stable and you feel like you just wanna like share yourself with the planet. And so it's really interesting. You're like, wait a minute, didn't we just go through this on the other side? So if you're in that phase, you're not losing your shit. Again, this is recalibration. This is after you get in alignment. Everything about you wants to like, you know, share and open and holy shit, I want everybody to feel something subconsciously wants everybody to feel, to feel the amazingness that you're feeling, okay? So, and that's a huge expression. Also, you guys, sex is a big deal because for a lot of people, and the reason why there are people that get addicted to sex, okay, and that's a real thing, it's because sex is the only time that people actually experience being connected to God, okay? That's how powerful our like human orgasm is. It reaches the cosmos. It reaches the galactic center. The waves of a human orgasm are like... I mean, I hate to say the word used, but they're used. They're used energetically throughout the layers of existence, okay? Which is why, I mean, we can get into this whole other conversation about like sex industries and everything else and energy being harvested, but that's another story because we're just talking about a personal ascension journey right now, okay? So the point is, it's very powerful. A lot of people don't have a way to relate to God besides like that feeling and they don't know why, but they know that when they have sex, they feel amazing and they like feel this higher connection. So that's where you have like higher self connection. So this is what happens, okay? And so, um, yeah, so that's a thing. So, so, <laughs> so basically this is when you want to, and when you become very aware, um, sexual energy is the energy of creation. The energy of an orgasm is the energy of creation, right? So this is how you expand. It's the energy of expansion. It's the energy of creation. It's the energy of the big bang. It's the energy that like, you know, God, creation. I mean, hello, babies also happen. You know, creation happens after sex. So it's kind of like that. My eyes keep crying. So um, really get in touch with yourself that way because like 
through these phases of recalibration of sexuality, you're just getting in touch with who you really are and your God self and your energy. So learn to use that for yourself. Use to align that with yourself. Like for me, I'm always very clear now after learning all of these things. So here's your shortcut. Maybe I should have like a sex workshop one time or something. <laughs> Anyways, okay, um, sidetrack. But there's just a lot to say about it, right? So um, maybe like not, like I should not say, <laughs> these are the things that happen when we're live, you guys. Um, maybe we should say like a divine, like feminine something um, workshop. Okay, so, or like sensuality, right? And and all of that stuff. So the the you want to be very clear about where your energy is going, okay? So next time you have sex, <laughs> Pay attention to what happens to your energy when you have that moment of climax of orgasm. Where does that go? Where do you send it? Who uses it? Okay. Start to become very aware of your energy. And it's really interesting. And then for me, it started happening because all of a sudden I had one time. So I'll just tell you this quick story just in case it's helpful for you. But one time I was just very like, very in alignment, very like, you know, and, and some of the stuff I actually teach in the metaphysical mastermind because like we go here, we go like all the places. Um, but I had someone, um, I was there in this very aligned um, place and <laughs> during sex, I had someone show up to steal my orgasm and I could see her and it was this entity and she had blue hair and I was like, what in the hell just happened? Because if you look, if you're clairvoyant, um, like I could see the energy of orgasms like years ago and it's pretty cool. You can see the interaction of like chakras. You can see like the way that the energy flows. You can see the intertwining. It's pretty powerful, right? So I can see the energy of an orgasm, obviously my orgasm, like <laughs> this is a me thing. It's just not like a hey, people like floating around in space, but the, um, and I could see this, this entity, this woman just like grabbing it. I was like, I don't think so. I mean, you know me, I try, I track energy. So you can imagine what happened after that. I was like, I'm chasing your ass through the cosmos and the planes of existence. And I'm going to need that back. And I need to know what the fuck happened to my orgasm energy. This is how I found out, right? This is how I realize, And so this is what I can do, right? So like after the moment, like I get connected and I'm like, I'm finding this woman because, you know, or this entity. And so I go and chase her and I see all of this stuff. And I was like, mother of all you guys are sucking our energy through this way. What is happening? Right? So, um, it's kind of interesting to learn things this way when I can go and I have this gift and so I can tell you things like firsthand, but this is the thing that happens. So that's how powerful we are, okay? If we could see through everything, which is also why some people then end up having moments where it's like scary to see, right? You kind of are like, do I wanna turn my third eye on? Do I wanna pop that open or do I not? Like, you know, maybe I don't wanna see all the things. Maybe I don't wanna see all the entities that are hanging out around me when I have sex that wanna like suck the orgasm energy out of me. Maybe I don't wanna see that, you know? So you learn to calibrate that. You learn to do that like on and off, okay? But the truth is we live in a dimensional space and realities and layers are overlapped. So it's really like this room right now to the, the human eye and the visible spectrum of light looks empty, but it's really not. It's always traffic, right? Um, this is a concept that's very well rendered in a movie called Crap the 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 oh my god the valerian thank you the valerian okay and they go to a he's like some whatever it's like some low budget sci-fi but it's awesome and not really low budget it's actually pretty cool the valerian in the city of a thousand planets that's what it's called so it's amazing special effects but just like not known actors so it's a little different but the um they go to a market in a different dimension and you have to wear this apparatus in order to show up. But what they show is a layer, the point of it, is that they show a layer upon a layer of reality. And you don't see it and you could be walking in an empty space, like nothing's going on, but really all this commerce and it's like a market, it's like a 5D market that's happening in a different dimension, but you have to be equipped to see it, right? So there you go. 
So that's kind of how it goes. Like there's always things going on. Okay. So now that we talked about that, you'll have to recalibrate your own energy field. This is why when I take you guys on astral journeys, astral projections, even when we just do the grounding, like what we did at the beginning here, you go from heaven and earth, you stay in your lane, stay in your lane. Okay. I always say this, stay in your lane. This is where you and your energy extends from heaven to earth. We have a chakra pillar. We have 13 chakras, 13 energy centers. Okay, we have 12 and then the God one. So it's like some people say 12. It's some people that actually like are awake and say 13 because 13 is where the God self is. So we want to go all the way. So like that's where we want to be. Um, but this is why our universe is based on 12, right? So if you're trying to reconcile 12 and 13, that's why. So we, uh, so we want to stay in our lane because then our energy continues to run through who we are, through our spirit, through our soul, and it's not going sideways. You don't want your energy leaking sideways. This is where like other people can grab it, okay? But if you have cracks in your aura, if you have cracks in your energy field, then things can be stolen at different places. So that's kind of what, you know, you, you become very aware of who you are energetically. Like, we're very good at like, I mean, you know, in the physical world, you can see things. If somebody steals your car keys, that's very fucking noticeable because you don't have your car keys. <laughs> so in the, in the energy world, we're just not used to because it's not obvious, but that doesn't mean that it's not in existence. Does that make sense? Like, okay. So hope this makes sense. All right. Um, what else do I want to tell you guys? Let me think. Like, where are we at in the phases of ascension? We're recalibrating. Connecting to higher self. Okay, so this is kind of that. Like, you get to the point where you connect to higher self. Okay? So you have to reconcile all sorts of different soul fragments. You have to make peace with yourself. There's a lot of forgiveness. There's a lot of tears. There's a lot of soul work. And you, you forgive your parents, you forgive your family, you forgive the fucking world for everything. Like you forgive, you forgive, you forgive. There's a lot of forgiveness. There's a lot of, and when you think that you've forgiven everything, you still got to forgive yourself. Okay. So like there's so much forgiveness all the time. There's a book. I've never read it, but the title, I, me and books, we, we don't, it's a weird thing. But um, my mom always talks about it. It's called The Miracle of Forgiveness. And I was like, that really, that thing is a miracle because like seriously, forgiveness is miracle inducing. When you learn, you know, to actually do it without holding on to things, like you get lighter. It's like the baseline of ascension is forgiveness. Forgiveness is the fastest way to lose density. And man, when you have to forgive yourself, it is rough. Like, <laughs> It is rough. A lot of times it's not even about forgiving others, but you have to forgive yourself for the things, right? That you should have known, that you kind of really did know, but that you kind of just bailed out on yourself for, that you sold out, that you like succumbed, that you like, you know, whatever, all these things. And you're like, if only ha I had done this, or if I, if had I, that, you know, whatever, like the regrets. That's rough shit. We have to deal with it. We have to deal with it. We're here to deal with it. That's density. That's balls and chains that hold you, okay? And a lot of times it's also like resentments against like others. And there's a lot of stuff like not speaking up, not telling your truth, right? Like good shit. There's a lot of that, right? Like, I mean, hello, acting out in the world. So it's just, um, that happens. And there, that's, a, that's a big phase. Dealing with that part, that's a big phase. I remember when I finally was able to forgive my parents, which I have great parents. So let's say this, okay? When you go through the childhood stuff, it's really not like, I do believe that most, I'm gonna say most parents do the best that they know how with what they've known through their life, okay? Most parents are well-intentioned. Most parents like are trying to figure out how to raise you and they, nobody, nobody has an instructor manual, right? Like that just doesn't happen. So parents like, you know, the, most of the time they, they, most parents, not most of the time, most parents like are there thinking that they're doing the best for their kids. 
whether that actually turns out or not, right? That's a different story. So as a child, you're like, this sucks. My parents are insulting me. My parents are beating me. You know, whatever. Whatever is happening uh, in your experience. And then you make up the stories and you make up the stories and you make up the stories. Those stories become your reality because you're receiving like the faults, right, of your parents and the shortcomings of your parents and like all that stuff. And so you make up stories about yourself, about reality, about life. That's the stuff that gets, you know, stored in your chakras. That's the stuff that like, you know, then plays out. Like the stories that keep on repeating. Like you're not good enough. You suck at this. You should never do that. Why would you even do this? Right? Like all these kinds of things. And you'll never get it right. Nobody will ever love you. You know, whatever. So all that stuff, the, the stories that we make up, gosh, I had, when I finally forgave my parents for all of that stuff, which they did the best they could. I mean, you know, my parents both had like their own situations. Like parents always come from their own things, just like we have our own thing. And then we have kids and we do the best we can. Right. So it's kind of like that. Um, but when I finally forgave them and they didn't even know, like they didn't realize it, right? Cause there's no point. Like they're just like, what, what is this thing? But then I called them and I was like, oh my gosh. And everything made sense. Our whole entire relationship shifted. Cause I went through a phase where I didn't talk to my family. Through my awakening, literally we had, we were like on fuck off terms. Like there was no talking because I couldn't handle it. And it probably went on for almost two years. So it was rough, but I just, you know, like, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. And so then we had to reconcile and I had to go through all the things and dark nights of the soul and questioning everything. So it's just, it's the phases of life and we go through them, right? Hard things are always doable. They're just hard, right? So we just get through them in the best we know how. And when we don't know enough, we acquire the skills to get through them. And that's what happens. Okay. So when I finally forgave them, oh my God, I find now I have like the best relationship with my parents. And I didn't think that was possible at all. You know, if you asked me in my 20s, there was like no way I would ever have a relationship with my parents. But now, you know, thank God that all worked out. But I had to forgive them for the things that I thought they did that they didn't think that they did. <laughs> and I have to forgive myself for all the stories and all the things. So it's like it goes, you know, there's, there's a big thing. But um, when you look at it and you can rewrite the story, that's when you get your power, okay? And that's where, that's the stuff that we do in Goddess on Mission. That's the stuff that we do in the soul work. When you actually take your power back from the stories and the leaking of the energy and the way that you've been suffering because of the childhood, because of the people, because of the boyfriends, because of this, blame this, blame that, blame that, blame that. So now this is not happening for me, okay? When you're done with that and you rewrite the story, you're like, mm -mm, I'm in control. I get to manifest the reality that I want because we really are, okay? all the time. So whatever is showing up, it's not because, well, this and this and this and this. It's your responsibility. It's my responsibility. It's our responsibility. Whatever happens in our reality, we're responsible for in every moment. If you want to change your reality, you change your state of being. That's how it changes. Okay. And the fastest way to see that in action is with family, loved ones, partners, like all the time. Like, once you learn how to do that, it, reality shifting becomes like very obvious because you're in a situation where you're like, not my jam, not jiving with me, don't want it, right? So in the middle of like some outburst and some bullshit, you're like, hang on one second. You go inside and you're like, nope, not available for this, not available for that, pop this, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I'm available for. I believe, you know, blah, 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 you do your work and then boom, it changes and everything goes away and you're like, Oh my God, that really changed. <laughs> like I actually changed the people around me. I instantly changed my reality. That is the thing that happens. Okay. The more practiced you get, the more you can do this stuff. So these are skills. This is what I call doing the work and skills because who doesn't want to change their reality? Like right away when you're like somewhere that you, if you're in a situation that you don't want, you can always change it. You change it by changing yourself. You don't change it by changing others or by changing the situation or by, you know, walk. I mean, sometimes you have to walk away, but like you change it by changing your state of being and changing yourself. Okay. So there's the thing. Um, 
Okay, so that was a lot about like reframing. So I feel like that was the part where you begin to like reframe your beliefs, you change the story, you tell a new story. And that's the part where you take control of your life, okay? This is your throat chakra activation. The majority of the planet is going through it right now, okay? Because you, you have to obviously love and acceptance and forgiveness, like the part we talked about, this is the heart stuff, okay? So you have to go through that and then you stand in your truth and then you claim your power. And then like, this is the part that's going on. And then everything happens about like your higher selves, your lives, like integrate. This is a part that to me is exciting because all the other stuff is like the physical stuff. Like you have to like figure out your like, okay, I'm on planet earth. I got to figure out how to drive this body and like manifest the things that I want because I'm here in this physical reality. That part is like physical. You have to do it. Like you have to eat. Like there are things that like, when people get lost in these like earthly things, I don't have patience for that. Like there are so many people that have so many things. And so I'm like, no, I'm not sorry. This is just, what I'm at. I want to say I'm sorry, but it's like, I'm not sorry. Let's stop making a fucking big deal about food and about things. Like it is a rhythm of life. Okay. It is part of the things that we are like moving with because this is our human experience. We cherish, I celebrate food. Oh my gosh, being here with the chickens, it's like the most amazing, organic, like heartfelt cycle of life experience. I love these chickens. Like I fell in love with them. I feed them, I take care of them. I take them on walk. I make sure that they don't go on the street. And then they make these amazing eggs that are filled with love. And when I eat them, I feel them. And it's this cycle of life that's like blowing my mind. It's really cool like to experience it like that. But the point is, it's part of what we need, but we're not here for that. Just like we're not here for the entertainment. Like get very clear that the stuff in the physical world is an expression of, it's kind of like our vacation from our real like soul job. <laughs> <laughs> that we like came on the planet to do, which is ascension. Let's not get like, you know, sidetracked uh, from that. And so all of these other things are like the side dishes, right? They're like the things that like are coming along. They're like, I don't know, the sidekick of the story. They're the things, but it's not about what so-and-so said to this person. It's not about the damn TV show. It's not about, you know, the, the houses. It's not about that. So it is not about any of that shit because guess what? When you die, that shit stays on earth and you don't. <laughs> so when you die, slash you transition, slash you graduate, you go to the other side, you don't get to bring any of this shit, okay? That's also written in the Bible. You don't, it's great, it's an earthly experience. But clearly that's not what this is about because you don't get to take it on the other side. That's how you know, okay? What you do get to take on the other side is your wisdom, is your knowledge, is your ability to work with energy, your ability to create from nothing, your ability to shift your state of being, your ability to be in control and manifest. That is gold. That's the stuff that goes into, and I quote the Bible, in the, the kingdom of heaven, right? Isn't there something in the Bible that says like something about the material things? You can't bring those in the kingdom of heavens, right? So then a lot of people make it so that money is bad because money does not go into the kingdom of heaven. That is not the case, okay? Money is great. Money is awesome. Money is neutral. Money is a resource. Money is your friend. Money supports you. Money gives you insane, amazing things. I enjoy money thoroughly, but I also know that money is simply energy and it's like food or like, you know, all these other things. It's an experience of physical reality, not the point. The point is we have to learn how to ascend. We're here for a job. We're here to gain wisdom. We're here to gain knowledge. We are here to evolve and grow our soul. That's the part that is important, okay? The rest of it is your side dishes. The rest of it is like the, you know, the, the, I don't know, the, the, the stuff that comes with, it's not the main course. You, do you guys understand what I'm saying? So it's not about these earthly things. It's about your soul. It's always about your soul. That's when shit starts to go right. Okay. When you are in alignment with your soul, that's when it makes sense. So let's talk about that. Okay. So let, let's do some questions because I see you guys have questions. So, okay. There's like, oh, you guys. Okay, I love it. Yes, the shit out of the shit. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes I cuss a lot because I really feel it. I felt that. 
Okay, I'm currently going through this shift with my mom and this connects post for forgiveness is amazing. Yes. Okay, you guys are feeling it. You guys are with me on the forgiveness. Yep, no handbooks. Okay, you guys are with me on everything. So the movie I was talking about is um, called The Valerian. The Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets or a Thousand Worlds or something like that. So, okay. Love you guys for being with me. Okay, so we're... We're moving. We're switching gears. Okay. So then you're on this path. You realize, okay, this is about my soul. So then all of a sudden, everything in like the real world, this is where a lot of people end up like, you know, doing the monk spiritual lifestyle. I want to say like you renounce everything and you're just like, I don't need a home. I don't need anything. Like, I don't need material possessions. I have found my soul, right? Like, you kind of have that thing. Um, and you, because you realize it's the unattachment. You become, like, unattached. This is the, another phase, right? Um, and, and, okay, again, by this point, you've reconciled with people. Like, you, you can reconcile. Like, you come on the other side. You just have to recalibrate. It's a journey of recalibration. Losing density, recalibrating, and then, you know setting course. So it's really like that. So then you kind of are like, I'm done. I don't need this. I don't need that. You give things away. You like, you know, it's just like that kind of like you have, you get lighter, you get lighter, you get lighter, you get lighter. Okay. Some people, what happens is in the spiritual journey, you get stuck there. And this is where you're like, you know, you're not needing money, but then you want to make an impact and you don't want it. You don't, that some people get stuck in never recalibrating their situation with money because somehow it's a cultural, this is a cultural, societal, human, family, old school, imposed motherfucking belief system <laughs> that money is bad. Okay. Cause somewhere in the Bible, it says that money is the root of all evil. I remember one time recently I heard my father say it. We were like in a heated family conversation and all of a sudden those words came from my father's mouth and I was like, Oh snap. That's the family shit that we get to rewrite. I was like, you just said that you actually really said that. That is a lie. That is a big fat lie. Right? Like, because he grew up Catholic. And so this is what happens. And my dad, in fact, his story is he made a lot of money and then he lost it. Okay. Because when you have bad belief systems, that's what happens. You manifest your belief system. So anyways, this is a story for another day. Long story short. Um, so <laughs> money is a resource and light workers need to not need to, because need is not a word that, you know, is like, it's not an imperative thing, but it would behoove and it would be beneficial and it would be a blessing for a lot of light worker to reframe their belief systems when it comes to money, because money is just energy and it's a resource and it allows them to help more people and to heal more people, right? For some people, that's not necessary. For some people, like, that's totally like, hey, whatever, I'm great where I'm at and that's just where I'm at and this is where I live and I'm functional. But, you know, it just depends on what your soul wants. So you get to that point where you give everything away and you're just like in nature, in the ground, like you kind of have this, you get this like, I want to say it's like this disattachment or this, this disillusion where you have to recalibrate money. I went through that. I used to make a lot of money in corporate America, okay? And I was working like, four million hours and like just burning out, which I did. I really did. I burnt out. I got mono from it. Um, I had to learn that, but you know, I also, you know, I had many great experiences. I learned a lot. I was making money. I was not taking care of myself. I was selling out. I was like taking all sorts of abuse because I always worked in an environment filled with men. I was always like the women with the men. Right. And so it's like those of you that have done that, like that's a rough, you have to grow balls, like people say. And then you forget your feminine side because you're like, you become this like business bitch without a soul. And I was like, what is happening to me? So I had to like clear all that. I had to like clear all the money, clear all the things, like all this stuff. So much clearing, you guys, so many tears, so much stuff. And then 
I, I had such a hard time because I felt like money was such a thing that I was using, right? Like it was just such a thing. I was motivated by money. That was the only reason, that was the only thing that made sense why I would like, you know, do all these things that were really not feeling good on the inside. But I felt like, hey, this is what we do in the world. Like we have to get things, you have to get money. Like you have to like, you know, and then also survival instincts because obviously I'm by myself on this side of the planet. My family lives overseas. So you kind of have this like, oh my gosh. And so then I was like, well, shit, I have to recalibrate all this. So I lost it all, lost everything, lost like house, marriage, clients, jobs, money, everything. You don't have to do this. Okay. But this is what happened to me because things are always very loud in my life. Um, and so it's just like, because you know, that's God's like, are you paying attention? Now I'm learning to pay attention to the subtle things. But before I was not paying attention unless they were like in my face. So, um, so I had to lose it all and then I had to reframe it. And so I had to change money from being a thing that I was using for things and a thing that I was like getting from people or getting from deals. Or it was like, you know, like for corporations that like, you know, yes, you believe in it, but you, are you really progressing the world doing this work? Right. I've always, I've only ever done work that I actually believed in. But it was like superficial. Like you guys, I worked in like, I managed a modeling agency. Is that like necessary in our world? No, <laughs> like there's just things, you know what I mean? Like, um, it's just unnecessary way of making ridiculous money that, that circles around the world in ways that you're just like, what are we doing with this, right? It doesn't feel good. So I had to recalibrate that and I had to believe that money can come from doing the right things, that money can come from doing good things, that money can come from service, that service deserves to be supported, that people that do healing work deserve to be supported, that money can come to people that do these things because this is what our soul is calling us to do. So if our soul is calling us to do it, then we gotta do the thing, right? Because there's no other way, but you also don't have to be poor and do the mission. You can change that. And so um, that's what I did. And it took me a while to rewire it because when I say, when I teach you guys like in the love and money manifesting and in some of the courses, right? I talk about the fact that it's not, it's not magic. It's belief work, right? It's your belief system. When you learn how to do that, then you're like, I can change reality. Oh my God, we have two minutes left. Okay, we're gonna go to another one because I wanna take questions and I wanna finish this conversation. So let's do that, okay? So, uh, because I feel like I'm kind of leaving you guys in this like reframing of the money. And this is an important part because as we're switching dimensions, we want to do this recalibration correctly because we want to be abundant in new earth. So this is what we're gonna talk about in the next live. I love you guys, Sonia G, part one of the special. Mwah. See you shortly.